Hi guys and welcome to my first squad builder of FIFA 13. Uh, as a lot of you know, you will have seen a lot of my squad builders in FIFA 12 uh, in different formations, either a 3-5-2 or a 4-2-3-1. So as you can tell, we have gone back to the original 4-2-3-1 formation. We are going to bum this formation all the way through the year as 3-5-2 seems to be getting me fucked over. So the first squad build I did do in FIFA 12 was a Colombian one and uh, that was episode one it wasn't tried and tested it was just a few goals and stuff but i do know that a lot of you uh, prefer to see me test the teams out the uh, people you know of in youtube or twitch so this team will be tested out versus the fluder the trader i don't know if he's that good at trading this year maybe he's just died off like his twitter account i don't know but we do have some footage of the game or possibly games against him at the end and you uh, can decide whether the team looks good or bad so let's kick it underway here is the first player it is the goalkeeper it is Ospina 77 rated I think he cost me 350 coins bin now a lot of the Colombians are really cheap and I will advise you to go and get them because uh, this team is very very unique and good especially the two centre backs the first one is Perea uh, he is an absolute tank his pace, 82 pace in the centre of defence, 77 heading, uh, sorry, 79 defending and 77 heading. He's an absolute tank, I uh, advise getting him. I think we've got him in a pack as well. We did, so I don't know his price. The second centre back is Olive, Olive, uh, a silver in the MLS. Now this guy cost me 17,500, it's a lot of money, it's the most I've paid for a silver this year so far. And I am avoiding getting silvers because we all know how uh, shit the matchmaking is so far on FIFA 13. So here we are moving on to the right back. It is Ar uh, Arias. I'm shit with names. You will get used to this. Uh, he is the only right back in Colombia uh, for the Colombian on Ultimate Team. He cost me 5.6. That's quite cheap considering he's the only player uh, who can play in that position who is Colombian. Better than last year, there was nobody. Everyone had a uh, mic on usually there. The left back is Armero. He is really, really good, Armero, uh, in the Serie A. He cost me 4.5k, but his pace, 88 pace, 79 dribbling. He's a good attacking forward and really good at defending as well. So moving up into the DMs, these ones are originally CMs. Uh, we have Soto. He is not that bad, but he's quite cheap. 500 paid for a minute. He is in the Bundesliga. So originally he was a CM. We had to convert him down into DM. And the same with Gurin. Uh, he is an absolute tank. His long shot is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so if you're going to line out, line up a shot from outside the area, it's more than likely going to go in because, as we know, OP long shots in this game. He cost me 4.4k. Uh, yeah, and he's a really good player to enter. The centre forward. This guy is Muriel, also uh, in the Serie A for uh, Udinese. He is a pace whoring beast. Four star skills, four star weak foot. Cost me 10k. I think his price has rose uh, a lot now. 91 pace, 76 shooting, 87 dribbling. Really, really good. The first of the two cams is Melina on the right hand side. Uh, he was really good last year. I think he had a team of the season uh, card, a blue card. I think I had him before. I didn't really rate him. Uh, he does say he's got 74 pace on him. Um, but he, he feels quite slow, so he's nice to uh, let the players overlap. And also, we did get him in a pack, so I'm not sure how much he is. He has four star skill moves, two star weak foot, so he's very dominant not to cut in on the left and uh, have a pop. Now, this guy is a tank, Ibarbo. He was silver last year, he was in the Serie A, he was in most people's Serie A silver teams. I did have him at DM, but this year he is a probably the most dominant uh, forward thinking player you can get. He's huge, absolutely huge at, uh, where do you find this at, oh, uh, I cannot remember, 6 foot 2, he has 3 star skill moves, 3 star weak foot, but look at that, 91 pace, 84 dribbling, he's just an absolute tank and his strength is unreal, as well if you check out his in-game stats, his passing and shooting is above average as well as his heading, so he's really good to sit there. Now this is to head on the top of the team. And it is none other than Falcao. We got him in a pack. So we're really, really lucky to get him in a pack. Uh, so we didn't have to fork out over 40k for him. Now he is a tank. Really, really good at dribbling, pace, shooting, everything. Heading is 90 as well. Four star skills, four star weak foot. Uh, and he's just really good. I 
I've always wanted to build a team with him this year so far and thankfully I got him in a pack last night and I've not looked back since. So this team will be used by me quite a lot in FIFA 13. Uh, so you might see a few highlights and stuff like that. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode uh, so far. I'm going to head on off now to get the footage done uh, from the two games against Fluda. Uh, so I'll see you in a moment. Goodbye. Right, so this is the team which uh, Fluda has lined up against us. It is a nice German sweat team. I do have it myself uh, in my collection. The two, front two are dangerous, but so is our team. Now, I was claiming that possibly we were going to have one or two, maybe three games, but unfortunately I never recorded the footage uh, of some of them. So there you are, the first goal was very nice with uh, Molina. I don't know what the hell that Tostegan was doing, especially the informed version, letting it in like that. Uh, but we do manage to make it 2-0 with a nice, uh, nice bit of play and a finish by Muriel to make it 2-0. But unfortunately we do let Fluda back into the game with another penalty. I haven't shown the first penalty, but this, uh, this one is a blatant penalty. And he does get the opportunity to pull one back, which he does from the penalty spot after a disgusting tackle by our barber. So Rafina tucks it in, as per usual. And then Fluda runs off and celebrates like a bitch. So after that, Fluda is able to uh, pull another goal back with another counter-attack, which is basically the theme of FIFA 13. The amount of counter-attacks in this game is unreal. Uh, and the two games me and Flu did play, I beat him 7-2, but the game before he beat me 8-4, and both of our games were down to counter-attacks. So in the 90th minute he makes it 2-2, he fucking runs around shushing like a cunt. Uh, but in, well, basically straight after, uh, st straight after the main game, we did manage to do a bit of individual skill with Falcao uh, to slot it in to make it 3-2. So that does show Falcao's dribbling ability and he's finishing as well. He's really, really good in them um, uh, dangerous positions and he can fool defenders quite easily. But then uh, Fleur does pull another one back with Jay Jones. I think that's his American defensive midfielder who he has got. Really, really good, good player. But in the 120th minute, scripting does become a big part. And yet again, on the counter-attack, hello Falcao. And we just ping it up straight to him. Who's not going to finish uh, with a power shot. With Boom. And there we are. A nice win against Fluda. Tried and tested team. So I hope you've enjoyed this game and episode guys. Uh, please leave a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you're not. And uh, leave a comment in the section below. So thanks again guys. And I'll see you again next time. Good night.